Let's pray. Father, we thank you for a gathering of your people who desire your presence. It's a privilege, Lord, to stand before a group of people who desire your presence. And Father, if there's anything in us that desires something more than your presence, I pray that you would help us repent because we need, we must be seeking first your kingdom and your purposes and your plans so that there's no idols in our heart. Nothing that we want more than you. Because I know what the Bible teaches us. That if we seek first the kingdom of God, mm -hmm. you will add to us everything that we need. Hallelujah. And you'll take from us everything that would hurt us. Everything that would bring destruction or uh, any kind of negativity to us. So I thank you for teaching us this morning of your ways. Teach us about not only who you are, but how you administrate, how you operate, how you function, so that we can be a people who cooperate with you in the doing of that which you desire to do. So bless this gathering, these who've come to hear your word, to be part of your purposes, to be changed by the work of your spirit. Change us today. In the name of Jesus. I suspect that many of you don't know that today is an anniversary. It is an anniversary of the consecration of the tabernacle in the wilderness. So many thousands of years ago, today, the tabernacle was finished. All of the furnishings were complete. It was assembled and Moses consecrated it on the first day of the first month. And today, beginning with last night, was the first day of the first month of the Hebrew calendar. This is New Year for you. January 1st, beloved, is a pagan holiday. It is not in the kingdom of God. The months of the prophetic calendar that God established begins in the Hebrew month of Nisan, which is around this time of year for us. But if you learn to follow that calendar and the, the months, and it's called Rosh Chodesh, the beginning of the month. So because they knew the time of year, because they followed the lunar calendar, you could tell, you know, the phases of the moon and where you are along the, the year. But today, there is an anniversary for us because we can, recognizing God's prophetic calendar, we can stand before the Lord and say with the people of God down through the centuries, on this day so long ago, you established in the earth the tabernacle of your presence. The place where the Shekinah dwelt, the dwelling of God. And Jesus, who came to tabernacle with us, became the physical, personal embodiment of the Shekinah. He is the tabernacle. Listen to this, please. Because if you don't understand this in the spirit, you'll just think, oh, that's a nice little teaching from the Bible. What's next? God wants you to enter into a realm of the spirit with him where you're watching his patterns, you're watching his plans, so you're praying different kinds of prayers. Mm -hmm. You're not no longer praying, simply praying prayers about me and my life, but you're starting to go higher and saying, Lord, what are you doing and I want to participate with you? Very different prayer. Most people are focused on their life their stuff. Jesus is calling us to tabernacle with Him. And when you come inside the tabernacle, when you go behind the veil, it's no longer about you. It's no longer about you. You stop being concerned about yourself. you seeking first the kingdom of God and saying to the Lord, what is it that you want? And then watch God take care of your stuff. I like to paraphrase that Matthew 6.33 verse. If you take care of God's business... He'll take care of yours. Amen. That was a good place to say amen. amen. 
Amen. Even if you don't need, need to, that like scares you a little bit, you know. <laughs> because we're so used to taking care of business, right? You got to do this, you have to do that, you have to do that. And God calls us into a place of rest. See, if we begin to understand God's prophetic calendar, all of the feasts of the Lord, what the Passover is all about, and you know, people think, oh, those are Jewish holidays. No, they're not. They are the feasts of the Lord. Amen. He gave them to Israel as a prophetic commemoration of who he is and what he wants to do. Amen. The devil comes into the church and says, oh, that's Jewish, as if somehow or another that's, you know, we need to stay away from it. Let me tell you, those are your roots. And if you don't study the quote-unquote Old Testament, and people say that in a pejorative way, well, that's Old Testament. We are New Testament Christians. That is deception. There is no such thing as a New Testament Christian because we, as disciples of the kingdom, have a heritage in the scriptures from Genesis through to Revelation. Amen. You don't want to cut off from um, Genesis through Malachi. You don't want to throw all that out because you have no foundation for your faith. You don't know what's going on in the realm of the spirit because you're wandering around in a paganized Christianity. Amen. So we want to be delivered from all the pagan influences and go back to our foundations. Read Romans 11. Go back to those roots and say, okay, Lord, what is this really all about? What are your prophetic purposes for Israel? What are your prophetic purposes for the Jewish people? What are your prophetic purposes for Jerusalem? <clears throat> Why is there such fighting over that little strip of land? Because God has decreed, that's my land, that's my te temple mount, that's where I'm going to put my temple, and my king, uh, uh, Psalm 2, is going to rule over the nations from that very place. Amen. Now, amen. now this, this side is getting it. I have to work with that, these folks over here. Because they're all looking at me like, wait a minute. So, like they, so all of you have now a responsibility. Look at them. So you have to teach them and disciple them. You know, sit down with the Bible and teach them. Good. Keep soaking. I like that. Amen. We're soaking it in. Good, sister. I like that. Hallelujah. We're like so stunned. We don't even know when to say amen. We're like, whoa. We never heard of this stuff before. I would bet this. I don't know what percentage, but I bet an enormous percentage of people who call themselves Christians in the Western world have absolutely no idea what today is. Amen. Have absolutely no idea on the first day of the first month Moses consecrated, this is Exodus chapter 40, verse 2 and verse 17 for those of you that want to do your Bible studies, yeah, and you should always go back to the Word and check it out. Exodus chapter 40, verse 2, verse 17 on the first day of the first month Moses consecrated the tabernacle and the glory of God came and filled it so intensely that even Moses couldn't stand in the presence of God. Now and listen to me. If you want to be a people that are really, like we said last night, creating an environment to really welcome the Holy Spirit. So you know, we've all been around good meetings. We've all been around anointed meetings. You know, but something happens and the anointing kinds of lifts. You've all felt that. You know, but we don't want the anointing to lift. We want to create a space where the anointing can abide. Come on, I tell you, I believe that God is looking for a people who will live such a life in relationship to one another and with Him that we create a space where the Holy Spirit really abides and someone walks in that door and they stop and they go like, Whoa, what is this? The very first church service I ever went to Soon after I had my encounter with the Lord that brought me as a young Jewish man to faith in Jesus the Messiah, which was a completely revolutionary uh, thing to me. Like, I had never heard of this, never knew anything about it. Some of you know my testimony. I had a supernatural encounter with God on a subway train in New York City. Wow. I tell people I got on the subway in one kingdom and I got off in another. It's like, whoa. And yeah, and um, the people that had uh, shared the gospel with me, they invited me to a church. It was Salem Gospel Tabernacle in New York, in Brooklyn. And uh, they invited, I'd never been to a church service, and I walked in. And as soon as I walked uh, in the building, there's a big sanctuary and a big gold Gothic kind of text 
um, there was just the name Jesus on the back wall. And I walked in there. The place was packed. Must have been several hundred people. Their hands were all up in the air. And I felt when I walked in, I, I, 